Welcome and vitaimo to Osiradok Ukrainian Cultural and Educational Center. Today we're joined by John Piskevich, the writer and director of the new documentary film, A Canadian War Story. This film combines archival photographs and film footage with first-hand oral accounts of Ukrainian Canadian personnel in the Second World War, paying dramatic tribute to them. Spanning continents and generations, the film recounts the remarkable Ukrainian Canadian odyssey from Eastern Europe to Canada to the battlefronts of World War II. John Piskevich is a Winnipeg documentary filmmaker and photographer. His films have focused on a diverse range of humanity that includes Inuit stone carvers in Baffin Island, the Ukrainian Canadian grocer and his daughter here in Winnipeg, Roma in Slovakia, and persons who cope with the challenges of stuttering. Piskevich is an accomplished still photographer whose work has been exhibited widely and published in several books, including The North End and its sequel, The North End Revisited. His work is also part of Osaradok's permanent collection. Uh, thank you for joining us here at Osaradok today for our um, for the online interview. Um, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about your upcoming documentary, A Canadian War Story. So would you be able to um, tell me a little bit about how this project started and um, the process of making a documentary using archival materials? Okay, uh, it was a long process. The, uh, the uh, film was initiated by uh, a retired RCAF captain who lives in Toronto, Andriy Sochinewski, and uh, he, he obtained the, the, the money from the, U, U, from the Ukrainian Canadian Veterans Fund. And well, well, once he got the money, the, uh, the actual film was produced by the Ukrainian Canadian Research and Documentation Center in Toronto. So there, there were a lot of players involved. And, um, and uh, the, uh, the UCRDC, the uh, Ukrainian Canadian Research and Document Documentation Center, uh, uh, when canvassing for a director, uh, I, I, I was contacted and, and, and they asked me to, to, to write up a proposal and, and, and present it. Uh, I did that in Toronto, and and fortunately for for me, I was hired. That is fortunate, and I think fortunate for us too. Um, so, like, you went to Toronto to find the archival materials for the film. No, the the actual archival materials were from everywhere. They they were from the Imperial War Museums in Britain, the the Bundes Archive in Germany. Uh, 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 a lot of the stuff k k k came off, off the internet. Uh, I got some material from the Ukrainian Museum in Cleveland and another one in Chicago. So the, the, the archival ma ma material came from all kinds of places. There's a lot of photographs that are being shown that um, help us visualize what's happening, but there's also um, personal accounts of um, like soldiers and people that were Ukrainians that were in the war. Um, it's really interesting because there's people narrating those um, personal accounts. How was that experience of working with people to narrate other people's um, accounts? It was a bit, bit of a challenge because most of the uh, most of the uh, soldiers or or service personnel, because there are uh, women in, in the film as well, uh, came from uh, from rural areas on the prairies, and at at that time the, the, there was a certain Western Canadian Ukrainian rural accent, and that the, that accent has 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 pretty well gone it's still there in some areas but uh the idea of looking for somebody across western canada to narrate each and every individual in the film so that they, they that they have that rural accent was impossible so i i just used whoever whoever I could. So I, I, I've got 
you Ukrainian people do 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 doing voiceovers. I've got, I've got, I've got Mennonites and I've got Anglo-Saxons. But uh, uh, what, what ideally what would have liked to have that 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 flavor of that particular prairie Ukrainian rural accent. But but it wasn't possible. It wasn't practical. Well, everyone in like the film, it's interesting to get to hear these like quite natural voices, right? Because you're not using actors, you're using, or were you using actors? I, I recognize some community. No, members. no, no, no. Uh, uh, I don't know. I forget how many voice servers we had, but, but as far as actors go, uh, we wouldn't have been able to, to, to afford that. Well, see, there you go, a practical uh, way yeah. of... Um, yeah, they were all amateurs. Yeah. Well, they all, it all sounds quite natural, I, I think, so it's... I think it worked out, yeah. Yeah. All the out. film uses uh, photographs predominantly um, as its visual language. As a photographer and documentarian, what power do you see in uh, still images? Like, how do they connect to an audience uh, differently than, um, like, moving images? Well, I like still images in movies. Uh, I like the, the, the I, I like the work that somebody like uh, Ken Burns does. Uh, in his words, uh, they the, they're the the, the still pictures. E even though it, it's a, a definite event, the, the fact that, that it's in black and white is, is more abstract. And, and, and because it's, it's, it's a still picture, I find that it leaves more to the e imagination in the viewer to imagine w what happened before the before the picture what was shot and and, and after the the, 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 the picture you, you kind of wonder well, like what led up to that particular moment in a movie you see almost the the the, the before the present and the afterwards uh, in um, in a, in movies, you you see a scene, mm -hmm. and, and, and the scene uh, is what you see. And in the picture, you 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 imagine more, you you wonder more. I don't know if that makes makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. I was even thinking about that when I was watching the film. That um, you know, you're introduced to people and. Sometimes they're posed photographs and you um, kind of understand what that is. But so, there's some more like natural photos where it's like in the middle of something. And it's these like, and it's really interesting to try to think, well, what's happening before that? What's happening after? Especially when it's World War II. Um, mm -hmm. There's photographs where people are, you know, happy and smiling. And that's always really like an interesting, I think, war theme when we see people like celebrating, cause you think, well, what's happening after that, after these people are um, having like a nice time. And obviously war is like, it's life. So you can't, it's not all just gonna be struggles, but um, even specifically from a Ukrainian Canadian experience, like the film deals with um, being Ukrainian immigrant in Canada and what that means. Um, it's, interesting to try to imagine um, where those people were and what they were thinking uh, in those times, like at that time that they were taking the photograph. Yes, yeah, yes, and, 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 and you have to use your, your imagination, any picture that, 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 that you see, whether it's a soldier, uh, you know, ha having a bit of a good time or, 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 or else lying in the battlefield or, or wounded, all those people were so young. The, some of them were as young as 17 years old. The, 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 the enlisted, enlistment age was, 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 was 18, but, 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 but a lot of 
lot of art. Well, la 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 la. I heard of that the uh, young boys lied about their age and, and they, they got into 17. And they were 17, 18, and 19. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> the film is called A Canadian War Story. And there are a lot of themes of um, war that are familiar, I think, to a lot of people in the film. Um, one thing that I picked up on was uh, that, you know, there's a juxtaposition between like struggle and um, celebra celebration. Like one example being um, the Ukrainians in London and the Ukrainian Canadian Servicemen's Association. And, you know, there, um, the celebrations that were happening there, people were meeting, people getting married. Um, and then the next scene we see is the raid on Dieppe in uh, 1942. Um, could you maybe elaborate on uh, how that Ukrainian Canadian experience of struggle and celebration fits into the broader uh, theme of struggle and um, celebration in war stories? Yeah, uh, well, well, actually, that, that's the uh, whole story of, of the film. The f f f film starts off the, 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 the describing the, 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 the situation of, 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 of Ukrainians in Canada prior to, to World War II. Prior to that time, you, 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 you Ukrainians were, were, were considered uh, Unpreferred second-class citizens. Uh, they, 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 they were mostly rural, rural-based, uh, and, and they were looked down on by the uh, the dominant society. Um, a lot of people uh, before World War II um, had, had to change their the, 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 their names to to, to more Anglo-Saxon names. If, if they wanted to find a job or, 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 or get a higher education. And so uh, with the war, after the war, however, because the, the Ukrainians enlisted in high, 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 num in high numbers, more than, than any ethnic group, uh, aside from the British, and and the Ukrainians' uh, loyalty uh, and courage uh, exhibited in the war, they finally gained respect for, from the dominant society. And, and as, 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 as mentioned in the film, they uh, were now seen as uh, so-called so real Canadians. That, 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 that's the story of the film. It, it's a coming of age story mm -hmm. personally i can only speak for myself like you know i don't feel those struggles of like am i ukrainian or am i canadian enough to be like here in canada to be considered in canada it's really interesting to hear um these like personal accounts of people really struggling with that and showing that they had something to prove and using war as a way of doing that um yeah, it's an interesting generational thing, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, nowadays, uh, ethnic groups, you, 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 be, be, be they you, you, Ukrainians, Arabs, or, 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 or Africans, hold on to their, the, the, their names, you know, even though it's a long name with, 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 with a lot of the letters in their name, they, the, the, they, the, the, they hold on to their name. But b before the Second World War, um, it, 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 it was very common for, for, for you, you Ukrainians, as, as well as other ethnic groups, to, to, to anglicize their, their names. Um, I, when, when I was growing up in Point Douglas, uh, a friend of mine's name was uh, was Gregory Grace, but his his father's original name was Boyko, mm. and, and he changed his name from Boyko to 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 to, 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 to Grace because 
he, uh, he saw more economic opportunities with an Anglo-Saxon name. But now, uh, I don't see that happening at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Indigenous people, uh, you know, you, you use their indigenous names now as well. So, 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 so there has been a, a dramatic change that way. Is there anything that you want people to particularly to take away from the film when it premieres on November 6th? I, yeah, I just wanted to, to let, 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 let people know that, that it's uh, a Ukrainian Canadian story, but also it's a, 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 a Canadian story. It's, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, that's one thread in the Canadian fabric. Um, and, and, and that's why it's called a Canadian war story. Is there anyone in particular that you'd like to mention that you know was instrumental in the film? Well, well, well I'd just like to mention all of the uh, all, all 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 the people on the film committee who uh, help help uh, guide the film and 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 uh, and then help guide me. Uh, they are uh, Captain Andriy so so Andri Sochinivsky, who, whose idea it, it was to, 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 to make, make a film. And also on the committee were uh, Yurko Serhachuk, Yars Balan, um, Yuri Darevich, and, and the late Andriy Makuk. So uh, all of us, all of them, are responsible for, for the uh, the uh, the um, the uh, final outcome. Again, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining me here at um, Osaradok virtually, um, and want to encourage everyone to buy tickets for the uh, premiere on November sixth. Where can they go uh, to find out some more information about the film and the premiere date? They could go on on uh, on war story no on canadianwarstory.com and uh, that that's that, that's the film website canadianwarstory.com all right okay thank you so much for joining us thank yeah. you Elaine. my pleasure okay thank you